Nobody had breakfast. Nobody had have breakfast. You had no. Let's say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, good morning. How, how many of you have seen two states? Super. It's about a beautiful movie about two individuals. One is from your part of land. The other is from my part of the land. The other is from Tamil Nadu, and I come from that state. And if if you ask any North Indian what do you think of uh, the South, they'll tell you sambar, <laughs> curd rice. But I'm not going to talk to you about sambar and curd rice today. And neither of Rajinikanth also. I'm not, not Rajinikanth. <laughs> and the other thing is, if you go South, you'll find two types of people. One, an engineer, and the other, a non-engineer. I am the former. Like every South Indian, I am an engineer and a management graduate. But I'm here not to talk about my engineering neither of the management. I'm going to take you to a world which has neither books, no notes, and nothing. They say 27,000 years ago, we did something which we still do today in different forms. The oldest form of human entertainment was storytelling. And today, we still do the same thing in different mediums. What Shah Rukh Khan does is the same thing. Let me give you an example. La 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 How many of you love elephants here? Slowly, it's okay, don't put your hand up, I'm not gonna ask you. Okay, and before you put your hand up, let me do, let's do a small thing. How many of you have right hand? Left hand. Right hand, left hand. I'm going to ask you to do from now, this is your right hand and this is your left hand. Same thing, right hand. This is your right hand. <laughs> right hand, left hand, right, left, right, right. That's what stories always did. They change things over time, and every time somebody tells you a story, something changes. And if I have to tell you, today let's do an exercise. Won't you feel bored? But if I tell you right hand and left hand, isn't it a little more interesting to do an exercise? All you did is just an exercise. Just to say, oh, I'm awake, I'm not sleeping. It's not a classroom, so you have to be awake. And so, that's what stories did. They were not preaching, they were not telling morals, but they did, you, did it in a very entertaining way. They did it in a way that you didn't know and I didn't know. La 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 la. And a grandfather and grandma would do the same thing every night. Or even daddy and mummies. Why put the daddies out? Daddies also tell stories sometimes. And so today daddies tell stories in offices. Startup environment it's called. And so they used to tell us every day they used to do the same thing. But did we remember the story? I don't know. But we enjoyed the la 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 la. And what we remember are these moments lying on the lap. And once upon a time, there was an elephant, a huge elephant. What sound does an elephant make? Very simple, it's a more simpler sound. Close your nose, open your mouth, and shout as if a cockroach sits on your nose. <laughs> That's what an elephant does. And if you're a biology student, you'll realize that elephants didn't have trunks very long back. So many years back, they said elephants never had trunk. And once when the elephant didn't have trunk, it went to the water and realized that it was so hard to drink water that it said, I'll stop drinking water. And from that day onwards, it went on a strike because every time the elephant went down to drink water, it's not an easy thing to do, no? A 500 kilo elephant going down every time doing sit-ups. And so the elephant said, put a strike. From today, no drinking water, no having bath. But that was the end, last time that the elephant had said good morning to anybody. And every time the elephant went out, everybody said good morning to it because the elephant had so many friends. How many of you have friends? Hello, this you can't like. And so the elephant had a lot of friends and from that day on the elephant's friends started coming one by one down. And finally the elephant realized that nobody is having, is saying good morning to the elephant. But the elephant continued walking and one day somebody very nicely told the elephant, Hey, have you smelled yourself? You have, you, even, the, even the most beautiful deodorant can't save you. You need to go have a bath. The elephant said, go have a bath, my leg is paining. The elephant said, I can't, it's really painful. But the friend said, so what friend could it be? That's your imagination. I leave it to you. Imagine which friend could that have been. And so the elephant went to the water finally and went down and down and down and down. It's not very easy. 
How many, if you do push ups and sit ups after some, uh, one year, that's what will happen. And the elephant went down. Went down and went down and went down. By the time it went down, there was somebody else in the water. And that was not anybody else. That was a crocodile. A crocodile, which is, how big is a crocodile? This big or this big? Big! It's quite big, it's quite big. And so the crocodile, instead, and if you see a crocodile, a crocodile is very unique. You can put a rubber band on a crocodile's mouth, it can't open its mouth. The crocodile snap is the strongest of them all. And so the crocodile snap at the nose of the elephant. An elephant without, without a trunk looks like a pig. Have you seen a pig? You like a pig? You like elephant, no? Or no, no pig, only elephant. And why? I will come to that. And so the elephant finally got stuck in the crocodile's mouth and it pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and rest is history. This is a Kenyan folk tale which talks about the evolution of how an elephant got a trunk. And if you come to India, you'll realize that the same story is nothing but the Gajendra Moksha. It's a story of Indra Dhyuma who became an elephant. Have you heard the story? If you've heard, put your hand up. Some of you. Oh, okay, so that's, some of you know that. And imagine two different countries having the same story in a different format. It's the same crocodile and the same elephant. And the, both the stories end with the same thing. And we would have heard this in different contexts. It can be mythology, it can be folklore, it can be different things. But the elephant finally got a trunk. It can be entertained for a child. How many of you think this story can be told to a child? How many of you think this story is about conservation? This story is actually about how the elephant got its trunk. Even biologists use this in their PhD thesis. There is conservation in it. It talks about an environment of an elephant which needs water on a day-to-day -day life. How much of water does an elephant need? Where does a crocodile live? And the crocodile and elephant you will see across Asia and Africa coexist. Yes or no? It is there in the simple story. That's how much a story can be used. History and documentation. And if I include once upon a time in the shows of Africa, is this talking about geography of Africa? Yes, no. It can, if I put say, once upon a time in India, in the southernmost part of the Nilgiris Island, there lived an elephant. Is this geography? A single story can be used, and that's how stories were always used as documentation. What are the other words for elephant? Have you, do you, how many of you use, call an elephant Jumbo? Jumbo? Jumbo, Jumbo, Wana, Barigana, Hamzuri, Sana. Why do you call an elephant Jumbo? Okay, with any country in Africa that you heard of? Have you heard of a country called Kenya? Kenya speaks Swahili. If you go to Kenya, you'll find two types of people. One, two types of Indians. One is a Guju, one is a non-Guju. Half of Kenya is built by Indians, and most of them are going to Gujaratis. And so there if you go, Jumbo means hello. Let's say like Namaskar, Namaste. In Kenya, they say Jumbo. And Jumbo only means hello. And once upon a time, somebody ruled us about six, 70 years back. We celebrate Independence Day, you know? we celebrate every year, but I don't know why we celebrate. And so, the same country was what was ruled this Kenya, and they were the British. And when the British went to Kenya, they realized this huge animal. And this huge animal was the biggest they ever seen in the world, bigger than the Asian elephant. So what did they do? They took it back to Britain. They took it as a prize. And when they took it back, they didn't know what to call this. They didn't know the word elephant or nothing. They just called it Jumbo. Because everybody in Kenya called it Jumbo, Jumbo, Jumbo. And Jumbo from Britain went to Canada. And later, Jumbo died in a Canada, Canadian zoo. And that's why elephants today are called Jumbos. Can I learn the British Revolution through the story? I can. So a single story, again, has a lot of documentation that rest with it. OK. How many of you remember what is A plus B the whole square? How many of you remember the story of the hare and the tortoise? Ah, did you write A plus B the whole square many times or you wrote the hare and the tortoise a lot of times? But still some of us forget, no? Okay, A plus B into A minus B into A plus B. Uh, A plus B into A minus B into A plus B. And that's how we remember things. How many of you remember the national anthem? Did we write the national anthem? We heard it. And remember, that's what happens in a story. It's the oral history and the oral memory that keeps coming to us over time. Every time you hear somebody talking to you, how many of you gossip? Nobody gossips, my God, something wrong. And gossip is written or heard? And how, what makes a gossip more interesting? 
the how you tell the gossip so you know no what what yesterday i went to this mall and i saw this friend of mine with another friend of mine and you know what both were not very far away they were very close to each other that's a story that's a story a story and you don't have to write it to remember it you tell it to another friend it will spread that's called chinese whisper keep spreading no but you have written this and like that there are many stories every story that's told has to be told again and that's how we used to remember and we still remember a lot of things i will talk to you about the hair and the tortoise the hair and the tortoise is a very interesting story written for children or adults children okay who wrote a hair and the tortoise mr asop it is it's called asop fables and mr asop was a prisoner in a jail you think a prisoner in a jail will write stories for children ha <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hair and tortoise. Who are we? Are we reptiles or mammals or amphibians? Mammals. Hair and tortoise. Who's a mammal here? Rabbit or a hare. If you look outside, you will never see a rabbit in the wild. You only see a hare in the wild. Those are things which is still look at so a little deeper. Hair and tortoise. Now, who's a mammal? Hare. Who are we? Mammal. Now, that's a who's older in this world? The hare or the tortoise? Tortoise. There is a proverb in Swahili again called "Haraka Haraka Aina Baraka." In Assamese, they call it "Lahe Lahe." Look at the usage of the words "Haraka Haraka Lahe Lahe Haraka Baraka." It comes in the south. If you go fast, fast, you don't enjoy the beauty of life. This proverb says. Now put this proverb into the story. Aesop, sitting in a prison, will be talking up a story to a child, or talking a little deeper. Okay. Now. the tortoise is much older the mammal now look at human evolution human evolution who is older who is younger the tortoise or the hare the tortoise now look at the story from that perspective and look at it from a time that the tortoise has been there for ages it's always been there and every story has a little more the other type of stories that we say to children something called jataka tales have all of you heard of jataka tales yeah. how many of you read um, the works of uh, gautam buddha jataka tales is nothing but buddhism a jataka means a story a telling by the buddha that's for children children don't need anything they're very happy are children more happy or we are happy children. why do they need anything they already white box you write things on them so none of the stories were ever written for children number 1 what you did now with your hands is what stories are it helps us to unlearn look at new perspectives look at new things okay 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 now the second part of the thing now stories were with full of animals and beings why us how many of you heard of merry go now that uh, badminton is a new craze of india we'll move to a little the older craze of india boxing and merry go comes from a land in which there is no television She has no television at home, and she used she used to grow up listening to one single story, and that one single story was nothing but the story of David and Goliath. How many of you know the story? And David and Goliath is a very simple story of some small underdog who took over a giant. And every time Mary Comb sets up into the boxing field, she reads this story again and again and again. She. uses this story to fight against their opponent every time on the court that can be the power of a story and that's and if you look at the story a little deeper if you remember if you read back it's not about just a giant and a small thing it's about israel and palestine is there history in a story yes is there documentation in a story yes is there geography in a story yes is there mathematics in a story yes it's how you and me interpret it that's the power of a story which nobody will tell you that stories is what you and me take it away from it so once upon a time la 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 there was a little kid and this little kid was extremely naughty so naughty that the parents were really frustrated they didn't know what to do with this little kid anybody had parents like that who were frustrated with you when you were growing up Slowly, your hands will go up. It's okay. And so, this parents saw that this kid was absolutely naughty, not sitting in studies, always failing in exams. But this kid loved to play tennis. This kid loved to play tennis, 
and his father loved music so much that he named the kid after a musician, after a music director. And so this kid grew up and he wanted to be a tennis player. His idol was none other than John McEnroe. Any of you heard of McEnroe? And McEnroe was his idol and he used to play his forehand and backhand and every day he used to do that, imagining that he is going to become a tennis player. But tennis and golf are two very costly games in India which need a little more investment. And so the parents said, no, 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 we can't do this. And so the brother, he had a brother, not the brother from his mother, from his other mother, from his stepmother. And always stepmothers are not nice mothers, you know. And so this mother took this little boy and told her son, why don't you do something with him? Yes, we're not rich, but let's put him in some other sport. And so they took this little kid who was named after music director and he was crying the first day saying, I don't want to play this game, this game is not for me, I'm not enjoying that. And so he put this boy in a game which is the most affordable game in India. What is that? Cricket. And so he put, put the little boy in cricket and over time this boy played and played and played and played and played and today this boy is what everybody considers the king or the god of cricket. It was Sachin Tendulkar. Have you heard the story of Sachin? That's what a story does. And did you read the story and write the story? Remember the story. Every story has a thing. Okay, I'm going to ask you five things. And see what comes to your mind when I say these five things. The first thing is a cockroach. Second, a fox. Number three, a tiger. Number four, Nadaram Godse. Number five, Jailalita. All these five bring some immediate words to you. Yes, no. Have you met any of them? But we all know them very well, no? So once upon a time, there was a lovely couple in Maharashtra. And this lovely couple didn't have kids for a very long time. And this couple said, let's go pray, let's go do this, let's go to an astrology, let's go to the so-called Swamiji with long beard. Because Swamiji doesn't have a beard, he's not a Swamiji. He has to have long beard. These are all things which very, he had not short hair, not trench beard, but long hair. And so they went to a Swamiji with, and asked him, what do we do to have a kid? They said, he said, pray. And they prayed. And they got a boy. And the boy died. And number two, again they tried. In those days, it was about a hundred years back, there was no WhatsApp, no Facebook. The only thing that they had to do was have more children. <laughs> huh. Really, I have uncles, I have my grandparents had about nine boys and one girl. Thank God she was born. If not, they would have had more kids. And so they did the same thing. They had the second child. The second child also died. And they had a third child. The third child also died. And they had another child. They said, this is the last. I mean, if we don't have this child, it's not possible to have a child every year, no? And so they said, the astrologer, they went to the Swamiji and said, what do we do? The Swamiji said, very simple, make the boy a girl. If the boy is a boy, only he dies. If the girl, he don't die. And so they became a boy, became the girl. And this boy was called a girl's name. So what girl's name will you give a very orthodox Brahmin Maharashtrian family? Lakshmi, Parvati, Saraswati, all these names. Let's call the smallest name Sita. And Sita was a girl who grew up over time and reached six years old. How, how old do you have to be to go join school? Six years. Six years is when you actually need to go to school, not three years and four years, not, not, you don't have to go to kindergarten or not. And so they went to school and they said gender. And they said, oh, Sita was a boy or a girl? And thankfully they had a boy, by this time they had the, other, they had the next child. Sita became a boy. And what name do we give the boy? What is Sita's other person? Ram. Ram. And this was a ram. So girls have to wear some things on their head, on their ear, on their nose and all. So what is in Mar Marathi or Hindi for what you wear on your nose? Nath. And he was called Ram with a Nath. Now invert the name. Naturam. And that is how Naturam Godse got his name. Now, isn't he a little more nicer to you? That's what every story is. So what are stories for you and me? The stories that we heard make the world of today. The stories that we share today make the world of tomorrow. Share the stories that has to be shared. Talk more. And today in a world of Facebook and WhatsApp and the Google knows when, what time we sleep. 
It knows the moment you don't press your mobile to the longest time in a day, it knows we are sleeping. Share if you can. Do a little bit of face look, do a little bit of talking, share what you are. My name is Vikram Sridhar. I am an engineer and managing graduate by qualification. But I loved theatre, I loved ethology, I loved social work. And together, I am a storyteller. I tell stories as conservation. To conserve something, it can be about nature, it can be about clothes, it can be about Punjab, it can be about Chandigarh. Tell the stories, hear the stories, don't believe in any story. There is no one story. If somebody tells you this is it, don't believe. Have a thousand stories about one thing and you believe what you want to believe. The world will be a better world. Make the world a better world by sharing your stories. And that's how we got this world and give the world more stories that you have found. Thank you.